yeah, simplifying the message. Great. I, I think one of the things, forgive me if, if, if my maybe ignorance is, but could you maybe just delve into a bit about how you're uh, solving uh, the damages in the supply chain? Like specifically, what what is your addressing and how are you actually solving that? Um, and again, how, how, you're, how you're working with the farmer to learn around that problem. Uh, no, so personalization in, in, in food is clearly something we're, we're deeply looking at and then we truly believe that consumers are looking for the solution for themselves. Um, and two questions for me. The first one is, um, are you planning on going beyond, you know, gluten-free, low salt, but having it truly personalized to me and, and I don't know, my blood type, my, my where I live, if I need vitamin D or if I'm pregnant or whatever. So first and foremost, uh, it's an extremely interesting area. Um, so I, I fully concur the fact that food safety in general uh, requires a bit of a shakeup. Uh, so uh, congratulations on that. Um, I also know, because we have been looking at, uh, at some alternatives, um, that what you are now approaching is more well, solving the sampling. Right. And you mentioned that one of the impacts is also reducing food waste. I wonder whether um, like sampling is enough to reduce food waste and whether you not should focus more on the processes as a whole because with sampling you still will sample one product out of a complete batch mm. so I just wonder how will this product um, well indeed tackle food waste in that sense um, I do by the way that if you can uh, I know that if you can test on site and not sending to a laboratory that is useful uh, so my first question is how do you indeed prevent food waste? Because you're still supporting basically the sampling procedure. Uh, second of all, currently you're focusing on the EU market you mentioned. Um, I do know that the US is way more uh, interesting from a food safety perspective because they are basically lagging uh, way more behind. Um, so is that a market which you're currently considering as well? Um, yeah, then my third question is like, to enter like these food processors, they are all quite big players. So as a small startup, how do what is your your basically your your your, uh, your route to entry into those big players? Then often you need to actually have C level access to get this sampling uh, in there because you're competing against the big labs basically. So how what is your approach there? And last but not least, is it correct that you currently do not have any revenues yet? You are expecting a million this year. Um, and if so, how do you come up with a valuation of 18.3 million? The, the question that I've been asking myself is um, what sort of uh, ingredients are you using? What are the input materials to your process? And how much um, do they account for the costs? How long do you think it would be before those kind of products would really be commercially viable for an organic farmer to buy to replace the cost of his labor? I had a question on business model, if you could elaborate a little bit on that. Is it the idea that you would produce the insects and then sell that as, as a protein source to, to, to feed manufacturers? Or is it the idea that people get a bioreactor on site so that basically means you will develop and sell machines. Yeah, thanks a lot, Tobias, for a, a quick and, and great presentation. Obviously, super exciting. It takes a lot of uh, macro and convenience trends uh, that, that we see with, with food. Um, quite like the, the thinking about vertical integration, um, but curious to hear how you in the future when you grow the business even more how you balance the vertical integration part versus going international is that at all on your roadmap or you want to go deeper uh, and, and take more of the market in Switzerland one question I've seen that you have um, expanded into kind of two different subcategories that are not necessarily synergistic um, at least in my opinion, one is more kind of on the snacking side and one is maybe kind of more um, on the meal side. Um, yeah. Just love to hear the rationale of uh, 
you know, of, of, of that strategy. Yeah, so f first of all, I'm not fully qualified to comment. Uh, obviously, being male and uh, <laughs> uh, I have never breastfed. Everyone's fed. allowed to comment. <laughs> But, but 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 I will. I mean, obviously, um, this is really exciting. It's very much on trend with uh, other uh, alternatives, plant-based alternatives to dairy. So, so so that I think ticks a couple of boxes. Now, this is a highly regulated market, of course, as you're talking about true infant formula, like zero to six months, I assume. Um, and um, and therefore, how how have you proved, and what more do you need to do to prove that this is a true substitute? And I was wondering, um, have you also thought about moving into different categories where you can apply the same type of technology, for example, in yogurt and, and desserts, so that you get extra shelf space in the, in the supermarket where you also build on that brand recognition, but then in, in different spots in the supermarkets? 